welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Maze Treatments. It's been a cool minute. I am sorry, and I apologize by that. But in order for us to put out good quality stuff, I, I have to have the people competing in this uh, make some good quality videos for you guys for their presentations. And we are officially starting round two. Sammy, I, I know that you had a round two joke when we shot shoot the shit, <laughs> if you want to bring that up again. I don't remember Oh, okay. Well, he, he he. I think he you were just talking about round two so much, and then you you found out we were shooting shit the shit, and you're like, eh, no. Uh, anyway, today we have Lost TV versus the Hotline John. And it's going to be a good battle. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough one in my opinion because they got two really good solid pitches. Uh, first off, Lost is doing a dream match crossover between. Krampus and Trick or Treat Sam. Um, it's it's called Clash of the Holidays. I think it's a, a brilliant idea, and I can't wait to see this pitch. I want to see uh, how he's gonna do it, what he's gonna do, what he's gonna you know all have in it. So it's gonna be a good pitch. But then on the other side, you have John who blew us away in round one with the Matrix thing, which we everyone thought that that wouldn't work in a million years, but it did. Uh, and he's doing the Terminator. Uh, another maze, or should I say movie, that you would thought in a million years probably wouldn't work. But I said that about The Matrix, and it worked. So <laughs> let's see what uh, we have here between the two. And we're going to kick it off with Losh. So Losh, take it away. What is up, guys? My name is Adrian from Losh TV. You may know me from round one. I'm that guy that did that screen video. And I beat Scott. My... Horror Nights Unscripted co-host. Scott, you did an amazing maze treatment, bud. I loved it. I wish Murdy would listen to us and turn it into a maze. But you inspired me to take something that I love and put a twist on it. So today, I bring you my maze. Roll it. So if you guys didn't know this already, I am a huge Trick or Treat fan. Like, huge Trick or Treat fan. And also if you didn't know, Michael Doherty made Trick or Treat. So what's another film that Michael Doherty made? Krampus. So this idea, I was just sitting there and I'm like, let's put something together that's original, but also something we love now i'm gonna place this in orlando but it's gonna be a shared ip so howling horror nights it's going to be in both orlando and california but of course my pitch will be for orlando now this is going to be located in soundstage 22. in soundstage 22 we've had houses like ghostbusters the shining and an American werewolf in London. And Anthony and the rest of the Knights of Horror, I know you're probably sitting there thinking, Adrian, or Losh, we've already had Krampus. We've already had Trick or Treat. Why would you bring them back? My rebuttal to that is, why not? It is very popular amongst the fan base. So, Trick or Treat's a cult classic. People love this film. Krampus is also going to be a cult classic very soon. People are going to talk about this movie for years. And you know 
that if Horror Nights finds something that can cater to the audience and the audience will love it, they're gonna do it. They've done it time and time again. We've had things like Stranger Things come and come again. We've had The Walking Dead multiple times. We've had American Werewolf in London, a perfect example, had it in 2013. And then we had it back again in 2015. So time frame isn't really a thing here. It's possible. And I think it can work. I even gave you guys a little backstory for it. So get ready for this backstory. It is Halloween night. And you walk towards a house that's halfway lit up for Halloween. So meaning half the decorations are taken down. This is the Alvarez family's home. So you look inside the house, they're in full swing preparation for Christmas. Now, Sam, observing this family, realizes that they are no longer following the rules of Halloween. This angers Sam and upsets him to the max. So what does Sam do? He goes on a rampage on the family, starts attacking them one by one. Sam doesn't realize there's a child here that is writing a letter to Santa to tell him how grateful he's been for this year and how happy he is for him to bring him everything that he wants. After the child sees that Sam has dismantled some family members, Lewis rips up his sheet, well, his letter to Santa, and throws it out the window. Doing this awakens Krampus. So Krampus is now on his way to the Alvarez residence. So he's gonna wreak havoc on Sam and the rest of the Alvarez family. Let's get into this house. Let's start with that facade though. All right, so for our facade, like I said, it is going to be the Alvarez residence. Now, when it comes to this, I want you guys to think of the facade that Orlando had for Trick or Treat, as in with lighting, but placed on the facade for Krampus in Hollywood. So if you guys seen that, it'll give you a perfect description of what this facade is gonna look like. It's a residential house. So the top left of this house, you will have Krampus. He will be on the side with no decorations. It'll be completely gray. Not gray, but dark on that side. However, on the Halloween side, let's say where they still have Halloween decorations, you'll have a little pumpkin patch. That is where you will see Sam sitting on top of a pumpkin, staring at the house that is breaking his rules. So the first thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna walk straight through those doors. Very first thing you see when you walk into this house is the pumpkin from the Trick or Treat house, well, movie, that sets a blaze. This is in the house to represent Sam's anger. Because if you look to the right, you see a box labeled Halloween, and it's closed up already, and there's a box on top of it that says Christmas and it's open and they also have their tree there. Sam sees this, he's angry. Normally when you walk into a house, the first scare isn't in that first room. But here you will see an angry Sam show up every time the fire goes off. Right after you exit the room that had the pumpkin and the Christmas tree, you start to feel cold and chilly. The next few rooms are going to set up what's to come. So. Basically, it's a hallway, the first room. Hallway, windows. Cold outside, you start to see a snow effect. And you notice that it's starting to snow where you are. And you realize that the back of the house is ripped open. And this is when you start to see Krampus's minions. Beginning with the snowmen, then going to the different types of toys, then going to the elves. All of this. Then right when you get to the elves, what do you hear? A loud thud. As you continue to walk into where you heard the thud, you start to picture in your head, oh, that's Krampus. That's where you're wrong. 
That's Sam. He's angry. He's still upset that this family was not following the rules of Halloween, and they weren't the only family. There were more families that weren't listening. So Sam sent a couple of his minions after him. He sent the werewolves. He sent the zombies. The school bus kids, you know, the school bus massacre kids. Then it happens. The money shot room. You see all of Krampus's minions on one side, all of Sam's minions on the other, and then they go at it. The scares are there. You have a werewolf on one side, you have the jack in the box on the other. You have a snowman on one side. You have the zombies on the other. The elves are there. All the creatures of the night from Halloween are there. They're going back and forth. Then, when you least expect it, above you, you have two bungee scares. Sam and Krampus swinging at each other. That is your money shot. The next and final room because, you know, you can't keep this story going on forever. The next and final room has the exact facade you had at the beginning. You're walking back through the entrance with the decorations up still. Completely set up. And depending on who won the battle between Sam and Krampus, the colors will be different. If Krampus won, the colors will be Christmassy. Green and red. If Sam won, they'll be Halloweeny, orange and black. But that's not the only thing you get if they're winners. You also get a scare from the guys himself. Depending on who won, you have Sam with a bag. And you see his bag is now red and white, representing he has the cloak. Or you have Krampus holding a burlap sack in his hand which is Sam's face, holding that out to scare you. And that, my friends, is Michael Doherty Presents Clash of Holidays. Now, I wanna say thank you to the Knights of Horror for having me on. It's been a blast. I'm enjoying myself more than I should. And best of luck to Jonathan from The Online. Jonathan pitched a heck of a maze. He pitched The Matrix as a maze. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But good luck to everyone else that's left. Good luck to Josue. Good luck to Connor. Everyone, hope we're all having a great time here. Thank you again, Knights of Horror, for having me on. Don't forget to subscribe to Lost TV and to the Knights of Horror if you aren't already doing so. And with all that being said, say excellent, my dudes. Wow, Lost, that was very, very good. I was uh, not expecting that to be as good as it was. I mean... I was expecting it to be really good, but that blew me away. I mean, I never thought this property would work in a million years. Uh, you know, you have Christmas and, and Halloween, you know, side by side together facing off. I think it's a great idea, and I really want to see it now. Uh, let's hope Michael Doherty or someone is watching this and they get, they get the inspiration to do it. Uh, I think it's a great idea. What do you guys think? Um, I thought that you uh, that you executed this like insanely well. Again, like Tony, I was a little bit skeptical on the idea, but uh, well, first I love your your poster. I thought your trailer was great. Um, but then on top of that, I really liked your idea for the the facade with the you know the Christmas side and the Halloween side, and then you're meshing together and, like overlap of some of it, like some of the rooms where you'd expect it to be Krampus was actually Sam and having them like duke, duke it out over this family and whatnot. I thought it was a really great idea and uh, did great. Sam, what you got? Yeah, definitely. I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the trailer was pretty sick. The poster was pretty sick. <clears throat> and the facade, I just found myself wanting more of Krampus versus Sam. Um, Cause I think with the whole versus thing, because I want a lot of that throughout. So, like, I really love the money shot room. Of, like, they're really they're, they're battling right there. Um, and they have their creatures with them. Um, but I just found myself wanting more of that. Um, 
but I mean, it, it was really good. I mean, we're in round two, so obviously our expectations are a little bit higher as we enter this. So, you know, there was some good, there were some more things I, I wanted and craved with this one, but overall pretty good, pretty good. My two co-hosts couldn't have said it better themselves. So next up we have Jonathan from the hotline. Blew us away, like I said, with that Matrix maze. We said time and time again. Let's see what he can do with the Terminator, man. This is a 1980s classic about a killer robot after Sarah Connor to try to kill her to make sure John Connor is never born. If you guys haven't seen the movie, a very great movie. I'm excited to see. Oh, it looks like we lost Will. I'm excited to see what John has to bring to the table. So, John, take it away, buddy. Hello, Knights of Horror. I'm ready for round two of the Maze Treatment Tournament. Thanks for having me back. I hope to wow you once again. Losh, buddy, I love you, but bring it. <laughs> now, today's maze is another one that isn't a traditional horror movie, but it is, in my eyes, sci-fi horror. Today's maze is going to be based off of the 1980s film, The Terminator. Now, I'm going to go ahead and place this maze at Horror Nights uh, just because. And this maze would definitely have to go inside of a sound stage. And the facade for the maze would be the Tech Noir Club off of Pico Boulevard. This is where Sarah Connor goes to hide out after she notices she's being followed by Kyle Reese after she hears news that people are, that somebody is coming after Sarah Connors. So she's in this club to hide. And that's where our maze begins. The exterior will look like it did in the movie, although we only see it for a brief second, but we kind of get the point. And from the outside, you'll be able to hear the bass of the club bumping and uh, street sounds to really set the mood. Now, when guests walk into Tech Noir, they're going to walk into it exactly like it's laid out in the movie. In the background, you'll hear the song uh, called You've Got Me Burning in the Third Degree by Tawny Kane and Triangles, which, by the way, uh, I'm really bummed I can't play it right now, but it's an excellent song. Go listen to the song and tell me it's not perfect for a Horror Nights maze, because uh, it really is. The club will look a lot like it does in the movie. To the left, you'll see uh, the bar with the glowing tech noir sign above it. Uh, the dance floor and the DJ booth will be situated toward the back end of the room and guests will walk through this room uh, with the music playing with uh, not much else happening until the T-800 comes out from around a corner. He's holding his iconic pistol. Uh, he's got a laser pointer that's aiming right at the guests and just before the T-800 is able to pull the trigger, Boom! Kyle Reese comes out from behind the bar and a fight ensues between them two. And of course, the T-800 is then disabled by Kyle Reese. You hear Reese deliver his famous line, come with me if you want to live. And then you exit Tech Noir through a back emergency exit. You exit the club and then you enter a rundown apartment hallway, which then leads you into the T-800's hideout which is that rundown, shabby, I don't know if it's a hotel room or an apartment, whatever it is, you walk into that room, guests see the T-800 sitting at a desk with his eye busted and a fake arm on the table, and he's performing surgery on his arm as guests walk by. And in fact, uh, ominous music is playing in the background, and as guests walk by and as the T-800 is fixing his arm, the T-800 will just look up at the guests and watch them walk through the room one eye glowing red very very scary very very ominous and guests will exit the room uh, through another doorway in the room but as they exit they will walk past a tv with the sarah connor news report playing in the background so guests leave the T-800's hideout and they enter a hallway that is made to look like the police station hallway. Uh, there's maybe wanted posters on the walls. There's maybe memos and bulletins on the walls that kind of establish that you're at the, the police station. And then guests turn a corner and they are finally in the money shot room, which is the Central Division Police Station Lobby. Now, in this lobby, guests will be sandwiched between the actual counter and the front doors to the police station. And the scare in this room is a fake car crashing through the station front doors, through the front windows. Think of it as a, uh, a set piece on a hinge, like if you will, a garage door, right? The car comes in and the garage door swings up a little bit. Uh, and think of this scare 
as the scare from last year's Us Maze with the Land Rover. The car will come through the walls, the headlights will turn on, the horn will go off, and that will scare guests as they walk by. Guests then go through the actual lobby door into the main police station hallway. Now, the cool thing is that they designed the doors of the police station hallway with kind of a matte finish to them. So that's going to help us in this maze because we're going to be able to project silhouettes onto the windows on the doors. You'll see the silhouettes of people running around in chaos. You'll see the silhouette of the T-800 walking from office to office. Uh, you never know where he's going to pop out. There'll be flames in the background, so it's all going to be silhouetted. And this hallway is going to include two scares. Right at the beginning, you're going to get Kyle Reese coming out of a door, screaming for Sarah, looking for her, and then the door will close. And at the end of the hallway, we get another scare from the T-800 itself, who comes out of a doorway, firing weapons at guests as they walk by. Now guests will exit the police station through an emergency exit and that will lead them to an outdoor area uh, that has lots of shrubbery and ahead of guests will be the tunnel where Kyle and Sarah spend the night after escaping the police station. As guests walk down this tunnel, they hear Reese explain, John taught us ways to dust them. It's when the infiltrators started to appear. The Terminators were the newest. The worst. Guests will walk down this tunnel and then bear right, and then they will see the resistance base entrance that we see in the movie. Guests are now being transported into Kyle Reese's flashback. So you enter the resistance base and you walk down the hallway, and it's going to be dressed just like it is in the movie with debris and junk and stuff on fire on either side of the hallway guests will walk down this hallway and as you reach the end of it a T-600 just like the one from the movie pops out at guests. The T-600 will be backlit. Their eyes will be glowing red. They'll be holding a giant plasma rifle and they will scare guests with sound and also with air cannons. So after that T-600 scare, guests continue down a concrete hallway and this is where they enter the final room which is the future war guests are walking uh, down a broken concrete tunnel that allows you to look out into the future war led walls will help set the scene far back displaying images of hunter killers uh, rolling around an hk aerial unit will be seen flying above searchlights will uh, shine on guests as they walk down this broken concrete tunnel and in front of the led wall uh, just to create some depth there will actually be a giant scrim that will have laser beams projected onto it to kind of create depth to the room so the laser beams will be flying through the air. At the same time, CL2 cannons in the room will uh, simulate explosions and dust hits as they hit all around. Resistance soldiers will pop out from behind debris, yelling at guests to get the hell out of here. Surround sound will help bring you into the future war. And then as you reach the end of this broken concrete tunnel, guests encounter the final scares, which are a barrage of T-800 skeleton scares popping out from behind debris, from behind broken pillars, uh, through cracks in the wall, all trying to get guests. And thus ends the Terminator. Now, originally I had planned for this maze to end in the uh, machinery factory uh, where the, the final act of the movie took place, but I figured that would be a little too hard to do in an actual maze, especially because there's a lot of machinery uh, and there's catwalks. Uh, there's a lot of things that would be very expensive to replicate. However, uh, since this is kind of a fantasy world, in reality, I would want the maze to end in that factory where you would see up on a catwalk, Kyle Reese fighting the Terminator with Sarah down below yelling for Kyle. And the final thing you see before you walk out would be a recreation of the scene where Sarah kills the T-800 by crushing it in the factory. But uh, we'll, we'll just leave that as a bonus. And well, there you have it. My maze pitch for a maze based off of the Terminator. I love the movie. I think it's terrifying to have a machine coming after you from the future uh, and I think it would be a lot of fun to do expensive 
but a lot of fun as well. And well, thank you, gentlemen. Have mercy. And no matter what happens, Losh, good game, my friend. Good game. All right, ladies and gents. That was John's maze treatment for the Terminator. <sighs> Why does he make movies that don't fit in horror work? Like, how does he do it? This guy's got an imagination beyond anyone else. And this is the second time he's blown me away with the movie. What I would never think that would work in a, in a maze. I mean, uh, I think. Uh, I, so for starters, I'm glad he gave us two endings to the maze, uh, a dream ending, but then a more realistic ending. Uh, and uh, it, it really makes me happy that he kind of gave an outline to, you know, because my, my biggest thing watching it was towards the ending was, oh, well, what about the final act of the movie where they fight the T-800, uh, Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor? And he brought that up. And, you know, he, he, that's, that's like a dream of his to, to bring to life. But he went for the more realistic route of having it end in the future, which I thought is really cool. But I don't know, man. I, I think the only thing I would change was, of course, when the car does come in, maybe have an audio snippet of the, of uh, Arnold saying, I'll be back, because that's, that's his iconic line right there. And it would fit the scene really perfect as the car's crashing through. Um, but, God, this maze, I want to see it now. And, ugh. This is going to be a very tough decision, man, because I really want to see both of these. Um, man, this this pitch, wow. <laughs> Something else. He really went for it. Um, I, I thought almost all of it was just great. Uh, all of detail and all of it, I loved, um, I loved, like, his idea for the facade. And then, uh, you know, that first scene. Uh, and then you know, later on when he goes kind of crazy with the, with the massive screens and the future war. And I really enjoyed his idea for the, um, for the, for the secondary like ending with the climax of the movie. Uh, my one, uh, if I had to pick one thing with this maze is that it feels a little bit like you're, you, you'd be walking through and like watching these events happen as opposed to be like, involved in you know the fights themselves but you know that's kind of a small nitpick for what was like an incredible pitch really great job what about you sam yeah this <clears throat> i don't expect anything ever less from jonathan i'm his number one fan um as you guys probably know um love the hotline um and so i really did enjoy this overall um you know from beginning to end you know there no detail spared, whether it be sound or how to accomplish something. Um, and what, you know, that's what I really think really separates him, in my opinion, is, you know, he brought in uh, just a pitch from beginning to end. Um, whereas, you know, I saw Lash had really brought, in, brought it up with, the, you know, the trailer and the poster, which were really sick. You know, all praises to him. I think Jonathan really just brings you a maze and takes you along a journey with him. Um, and, you know, really tells a story from beginning to end. And even even though he doesn't completely finish the movie in his, you know, realistic one, I love the ending of you fighting the T-800, like going out with the T-800s. Um, and those are some really good scares. And I'm sure there's a bunch of animatronics that Universal has that are, you know, not functioning well currently that they can just throw there. Um, that'll be sick, you know. And... I mean, they also had a Terminator show for a while, so I'm pretty sure they can pull from there. And um, I just thought it was really cool because, you know, it takes you through the movie again, the same thing he did with The Matrix. Um, and it just, you know, provides moments that are kind of tense and scary and they're not intended for that because it's a, it's a suspense thriller action movie. But it's not like, a, you know, you don't watch the movie and go like, oh my God, that was a horror movie. That's, you know... It's not, like, in the ranks of, like, The Conjuring or, like, The Exorcist or something like that. You know what I mean? So I, I, I really I really enjoyed it. I think, you know, I really don't have a critique for him on this one. Um, make a trailer maybe next time. I don't know. Like, I'm really <laughs> pulling something out of my butt at this point to, to find something wrong. Yeah, this is, uh, this is where it becomes the hardest decision ever and it's been a hard decision at the end of every maze treatment video that we've done is coming down with the final verdict because uh i'm throwing this out there right now when it comes down to deciding 
it's really hard because one, they're all your friends, and two, everyone does such amazing work. Like, it, it's really hard to choose whether you have visuals or not. I mean, we clearly saw with Connor just telling a story of something just hooked us in, and it was such a good pitch. Uh, it was hard to go for him to go up against you know Zombie Chris, who had an amazing pitch as well, and this is that that part of the the show where what I always hate doing because if I can just award a title to everyone I would but it's a competition so we have to award one winner uh so here's my verdict Losh your pitch was great your trailer was great your poster looked amazing and I really want to see this John your movie is something that I've bonded with my dad many times uh and really has a lot of memories to me and I would love to see as a maze as well i mean you got two incredible ips here uh with losh it's pretty much two on its own but then you know it's combined into one but two amazing ips from losh where uh both ted doherty directed the end and wrote these films which are just fantastic michael michael not ted yeah is, is his last name doherty though yeah yeah that's why i said doherty. he said ted i said doherty See, you said Ted Doherty, I swear. I just yeah, you said Ted Doherty. I said, Ted? I, said I, I thought I just said Doherty. Nah, bro, it's okay, okay though. Well, Continue. anyway, I'm just gonna uh, Doherty. You know, brought these amazing films to life, and I, I love them both. But then you have James Cameron, who brought us the Terminator, which was at the time revolutionary and amazing. And Sammy brought up the fact that, of course, Universal used to do the show so they can pick a lot of stuff from that. Not to mention the actors they had on the show. They can also bring them back if they, if they were willing to do that again to kind of have like a one last final run of the thing. Um, so when it, with that all said, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go John. I, I really like John's pitch, and uh, I really loved Lost's pitch as well. But I think with John, you know, I, like Sammy said, he takes you through the movie from start to finish. And uh, I, and I like how he gave us a realistic ending and a, a dream ending where, you know, if, if they had more budget and more time and everything, they can create that uh, fantasy ending of ours that we love. Because that was my biggest question is how are you going to leave that part out? But then when John broke it down, I was like, okay, realistically, that makes sense. And the, and the last and the original ending that you had would probably be a more likely scenario. But I, I, I love it, man. I mean, T-800 everywhere. Uh, Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor. It's basically like you're following them throughout this entire battle. I'm going John. Um, man, wow. These are two incredible pitches. And uh, to have to pick between them is brutal. But if I had to pick, I think I would have to go with Clash of Holidays. Uh, I love both of these pitches. But to me, it felt, it felt like something I could, I could like picture walking through this maze and, um, and it just sounds like an awesome time to go through both a good, a good combination of like horror and like terrifying scenes and some awesome effects with like your, uh, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for temperature changes in these mazes and um and having such a wide variety of characters to pick and pull from so you never really know what's coming up next and uh i think that i think that's i got that's why i gotta give it to uh, clash of holidays I, I agree with you 100 percent. that's why this was a very hard one for me to choose sammy the fate of the winner to go to the finals rests in your hands brother who are you choosing my venmo hit me up um, send me your money, whoever wants to win. Uh, <laughs> uh, come the next week. You know, send, him, send, send me the Venmo. He needs the money right now, man. It would yeah, help a yeah, lot. Yeah. Whoever sends the most money gets the win. Yeah, bro. I need a new 4K TV maybe. Um, so Xbox Series X is coming out. PS5 is coming yeah, out. He's got to upgrade to that 4K, man. I heard Madden comes out next week. I may need Madden too. Madden's so. coming out. You know, we may not get a stimulus. We may not get a stimulus check. So Sammy kind of needs the money right now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, I thought Lost really brought his A game. Um, he really stepped it up in round two. Um, really brought you know two IPs to life and said, "Let me take some creative freedom with both," which you know, hats off. Uh, I don't want to show you guys the rest of my hair. Um, so hats off to that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, and you know, really, yeah, he, he told the story as well. I'm really brought it with the trailer and 
while uh, making his own you know, little poster there and then really trying to tie two movies together. Really, once again, hats off. Or Jonathan really just brought, I think something, like where Will said he can picture, uh, uh, you know, The Clash. I, I really feel like I can picture Terminator happening um, and seeing it happen. Obviously, like I mentioned, they have the, they have the props there already. Um, and, you know, you know, John always does go a little, a little bit above budget uh, every time. You know I mean? He likes to, uh, he likes to, he, he ain't about that frugal game when it comes to a maze. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just think at the end of the day, I'm, um, I'm all about that T, T, uh, T, what is it? T800? T800. Actually, yeah, I'm all about that T800 where that ending sells me. Um, and, you know, if you mention us in your maze, you're probably going to win too. Um, so, there we are. The hotline. Congratulations, buddy. You're going to the finals of maze treatments. Uh, big shout out to Lashto, man. You brought a creative juice that I would never in a million years think to pitch. And I would honestly love to see Clash of the Holidays. Was that what it was called? Clash of the Holidays? Am I right? Yeah, I'm on the same boat. I want to see it. Yeah. I just want to see the other so, ones a little bit more. There was, this was probably, and I say this every episode because every episode people bring their A game, but this was probably the hardest decision thus far in the tournament that we've had to make. We have two great pitches, two great content creators. And, I mean, when you're going up against, you know, a, a property like Clash of Holidays and a property like the Terminator, but you have John discussing Terminator and then you have an amazing pitch done by Losh who, who blew us away with the Scream one. It was very hard. I knew this out of round two, this was probably going to be the hardest decision. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe Connor versus uh, Josue is probably going to be even harder. I don't know. But I knew this was going to be a really hard decision to make because these two brought their A games in round one, and in round two, they killed it again. If I could choose both, I would I would have them both advance to the finals because I would love to see what Losh can bring again to the table. Uh, but... Yeah, Hotline, congratulations. I can't wait to see what you have to bring to the finals. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the first round of uh, round two. Or how does that even go? First match of round two. First match, yeah. First match of round two. Tune in next time for Josue versus Connor. Uh, let's see what happens. I mean, Connor blew us away with the original Aliens property, and uh, that was based off a of scare zone at Orlando. And Josue blew us away with Coraline. So I'm excited to see what happens next week or whenever we film this next Mace Treatments, but tune in, and uh, we love each and every one of you, and we'll see you guys soon.